Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Triangulation is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Triangulation, episode 62, recorded July 25th, 2012. Lamore Freed of Adafruit.com. Triangulation is brought to you by Ford, featuring the My Ford Mobile smartphone app for electric vehicles. The My Ford Mobile app makes the electric driving experience fun and efficient. Learn more about Ford electric vehicle technologies at Ford.com slash technology. Welcome to Triangulation, the show where, oh, I love this show. I love this show. We get the best, most interesting people in the technology industry to sit down for an hour and talk about what they're doing, what their big ideas are. It's And it's very relaxed, very informal, and a lot of fun. I've, I've been anxious to get uh, our guest today on the show for some time now, Lamore Freed is uh, very well known uh, in, the, in the maker community as the founder of Adafruit Industries, adafruit.com. She's Miss Adafruit, uh, and she is a hacker, an uh, engineer, and an inspiration uh, for people who just want to take stuff and do stuff with it. Lamore, thank you so much for being here on a triangulation. Thank you. Thank you for having us uh, me on the show. Um sorry we couldn't schedule this earlier. It, we've been so busy here at Adafruit and uh, I'm really glad that we finally got an hour that of intersecting Yay! could we could get together and do the show. It, it, uh, you're in the Adafruit uh, warehouses in Manhattan right now. It looks That's right. R- right now I'm um I'm broadcasting from the Adafruit storage warehouse. You can see we store oscilloscopes. Um oh, cool. We have this awesome resistor chart that's uh, embroidered onto a pillow and then some more boxes. And, and yeah, we're downtown in Manhattan. We're a couple blocks from the World Trade Center um, in the financial district. So it's really exciting uh, to be here in New York. Not weather's not as good as Petaluma, but... Eh, that's all right. It's probably burning hot there right now. It's pretty hot. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Hey, you... And, you know, it's fun because you're, you're clearly somebody, and I love talking to people like you who are doing living the dream they're living they're following their bliss they're doing what they really care about when did you get interested in um in electronics and hacking and this kind of stuff um i've been doing electronics for uh you know almost a decade or more now i started it when i was at school and uh, no actually college i got into it in college i i went were you a geek in high school I was a geek in high school, and like modems had just been invented, so that was like <laughs> it, uh, BBSs and stuff, and that was cool. And then like we, the internet was kind of like by the time I was about to graduate, like people were using the internet, and that was really awesome. And then I went to um, college, and I was actually studying computer science at computer MIT, science, I might add. At MIT, and yeah. it it uh, it was really fun, and I really enjoyed uh, Core Six, which is uh, what I was studying, but. I kept getting really excited by all these electronic projects that I saw people building, especially on campus. And so that's why I decided to change my major kind of like as a junior. I was like, okay, take a right turn wow. and let's do electrical engineering. And electrical engineering is is really my passion. It was so much fun. I kept building projects just for fun and putting them up on my web page. And then um, back then, like people read Slashdot a lot. And so these projects would get pushed on Slashdot and then People would email me and say, wow, this like DIY MP3 player is so cool. I want to also build my own MP3 player. And could you like sell me a pack of kits, parts Mm. or something? I can build it because I have instructions, but like you have to go to all these places and like buy, you know, resistors here and the chip there and like an SD card holder from this company. So people kept asking me for kits. And that's where Adafruit came from is me building projects and then um, developing these kits that people can build and then putting them on the website and then people build them. So we have like, you know, hundreds of projects and tutorials and kits all over uh, the Adafruit site for people to learn from. Are you still handling a soldering iron or do you have people do that now for you? I, I have a great team of people and we have some people in production, but I still do a lot of the building. I still build all the prototypes. I still test everything that goes in the store. I still write a majority of the documentation. Wow. Yeah, we actually just recently came out with what we think is like the best tutorial system because we want to teach people electronics. Right. So we 
like wrote from scratch. Cause we've been using WordPress and wikis and like instructables and they're all really good and they all have their strengths, but we wanted something that was like WordPress, the ease of WordPress, but for teaching people stuff. Hmm. And um, we developed our own educational system at learn.adafruit.com. And it's kind of this awesome mashup of like Pinterest and like blogging and like lots of big images everywhere and it's just awesome we just released it and we have like 50 tutorials up already and it's just so cool and we're going to open source it you know as soon as it's ready to be released this is great it, it is it's a pinterest for uh people who want to learn circuits and and build a uh, build stuff that's awesome yeah it's all just like you're learning stuff not just buying shoes so that's yeah look at yeah. this cool stuff Click on any of these, and I have some of these to show off too. Some of these projects. Oh, good. You want to see? Like, yeah, let's let's we'll show some stuff here. This is, this is. So let me just, but let me ask you about this. So, is it a political thing? Why do you want to teach people electronics? Just because you love it, or do you have a greater goal? I just love teaching people stuff, and people <laughs> love to learn, and and everyone is so creative. I think, yeah. and um, people want to learn how to build this sort of stuff. Yeah. And you know. Uh, like I went to school and I studied like for six years, electrical engineering, I did a master's in it. And that's great if you want to learn how to like bias a transistor. Um, but a lot of people are just like, well, I want to build like some bike lights for, you know, my bike and I want to bed them in the handlebar and I want to make it so you don't have to go to school. <laughs> it's like some people are like, you know, they've already gone to school and they've learned something or they're too young. We have a lot of um, people who visit our site and follow our tutorials who are, you know, they're, they're only like eight, 10 years old, Yay. and they're awesome. They're just, like, rocking out. They're like, I built this quadcopter. Oh, look at that. <laughs> That's bright. <laughs> Nobody's going to run into you that, with that one. This is a really easy project, but it still teaches you a lot. Um, it's this flexible LED strip, and you have to solder to it, and you have to build a battery pack, and so you learn about current consumption and voltage and how to power LEDs, and you know, and you, you wrap it with clear bar tape. And so this is our, our demo, and um, Becky did an awesome video for this, so you can check it out later if you want. Learn.adafruit.com. It's, it's on there. Check it out. Yeah, it's like the one that looks like this. But yeah, so these are, we have projects that are really simple like this. This is like a two hour project that a beginner can do up to like, you know, massive, like week long endeavors. <laughs> I just, I love it. This is, um, if uh, on, on, her, on Google Plus, this is your profile picture, the cover of Wired magazine, in which you are a modern Rosie the Riveter. Yeah, we did. Um, we had a, a, a big thing where uh, Chris Anderson, who's totally awesome, um, he's been doing so much stuff with DIY and, and, and he has his own 3D robotics company. And um, we met him a couple of maker fairs ago and he was just like, I'm so inspired by the maker movement. And I was yes. like, I want to do a whole issue just about it. And we're like, that's so cool. And then, you know, out of nowhere, he's like, and we're going to put you in the cupboard. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Well, but you're a great, you know what, I'll tell you why it's good, because you're a woman. Uh, mm -hmm. This this opens it up to uh, a whole generation of eight-year-old girls who don't know any better that it's not, they're not supposed to do this. That's fantastic. Actually, I have a really good story about that. So we actually, we also do a show. I do a show um, with uh, my assistant, Phil, and uh, we have it every week, Saturday from uh, 9 to 10 o'clock Eastern time, and it's called Ask an Engineer, and it's basically like a live yeah. call-in um, so I use Ustream and I, I'm broadcast live and then people can use the Ustream chat and they're like, okay, I have a, you know, project where I'm trying to elevate my hovercraft and I only have this kind of battery. What can I do? <laughs> uh, so like I try to answer like all these questions live and also show off like videos and projects and stuff. And we've been doing it for three years. So that's pretty exciting. Um, but one of the best parts about the show is I have like my favorite engineers, like, um, my friend, Amanda Wozniak, no relation. Um, and, uh, Becky, of course, who shows up all the time and shows off her projects and tons of other awesome women engineers, um, from around New York and, and the East coast. And, um, one of the really cool things is we actually had, um, a parent email in and say, Hey, um, you know, we've been, me and my daughters have been watching the show. I have an eight year old daughter and a 10 year old daughter. And, um, you know, they asked me at the end of, they asked me at the end of the last show, because you had Amanda over, um, do guys ever do engineering? <laughs> do any boys do this stuff? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I, you know, I, 
have all my friends on the show and a lot of them are women and we have we have guys on the show too but um i think that's just so cool that you know the next generation they're they're seeing like all this awesome technology and how easy it is and you can do it and like they become engineers and like it's that easy yeah, we know Jerry Ellsworth comes by all the time, and she's a great inspiration, too, and, and uh, somebody who loves building stuff. She's very physical with her stuff, and it's, it is. It's so exciting. And I think that one of the, you know, even if you're not political, I would say one of the political agendas I, we have is that we're getting into a time when stuff is so complicated that nobody knows how anything works. And we're all using technology and fewer and fewer people are figuring out how it works. And that means there won't be any innovation. That means if anything breaks, nobody will be able to fix it. It's so important that along with getting people to use technology is getting people to understand it, build it, create it, and invent it. That's part of the deal. Hmm. Totally. Sorry, I had to have a drink. Um, I don't blame you. It's very hot there, I'm sure. Here. Um, one of the other things – so, yeah, a lot of what we're doing here is teaching people – um, these skills and yep. a lot of these are like very hand-based skills, which I think people are really interested in getting back into. That's another thing that's interesting. Yeah. Using your hands. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's typing involved, um, but <laughs> uh, there's also like soldering and welding and attaching. And one of the things we're trying to do is we're trying to get kids especially, but also adults, um, cause adults are kids too, um, to learn more of these hands-on skills. And so um, one of the things that we came up with a couple months ago was the idea of having a badging system. So there's there are online badges, like Foursquare you get badges, and like Mozilla you get badges, but these are all digital badges. Right. And they're, they're digital badges for like digital skills, but we wanted physical badges for physical skills. So we have like um, some really cool badges, like for example, here is um, a catapult badge. So oh. you, there you go, you get this badge, and it's this really beautiful embroidered badge. And you get it when you build a catapult because like, kids love building stuff like that. And we have one for um, uh, 3D printing. Awesome. So if you've done bot or you've done 3D printing. And it's interesting because we actually talked to um, the some people at the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts of America. And we're like, knots are cool. We, we love knowing how to sail a boat. But like, you know, people should also like get a badge for learning how to dumpster dive. Yeah. <laughs> They'll never do that. <laughs> All sorts of we have Tesla coil badge. People love building high voltage stuff. Just be careful. Um, and all sorts of skills. So we're trying to get – we also have a digital badge system that we're working on. But we just think like parents and educators should like – like, you know, you probably have young people in your life that want to learn these skills. Um, so we have like these requirements docs and you can go through and like – you know, you have a love of like welding, for example, and you can go through and teach a kid how to weld. And then when you're done, I don't know, what, yeah, you can give them a welding badge and they can attach it to their bag or their backpack or their jacket. And so they can share these skills and be proud of them, you know. And and I think like, you know, I love taking shop classes as a kid. And so I'm hoping that more parents get involved with their kids and, and do these projects together because that's, that's the most fun, of course. Yeah, I agree. So where's, let's, where should we start? Let's... Uh... Uh, if you go to adafruit.com, it's kind of overwhelming. I mean, the new products page alone is 130 products. You guys are just, like, explosive. You're going crazy. Everything from a USB micro SD card reader uh, to a uh, OLED graphics display. You've yeah, I love these. OLEDs. They're so cool looking. And we have the the project pack for that um, LED, LED um, bicycle handlebar. We try to do it so that every project we have has, like, a project pack so oh, that good. you can just the pack and then you, you do the assembly, but it's, it's not so bad. And a lot of the products we've been putting in lately actually have to do with the raspberry Pi, which is my latest obsession. Yeah. We had um, Eben I've, Upton on the show last week and we were talking about raspberry Pi. It is exciting, isn't it? And you've already made, you made, are you gonna make some more shields for raspberry Pi? I know you made some of those. I have a proto plate, but we're still kind of figuring out like, figuring out like what people want to do with the pie because it's so powerful um, that it's actually a little bit, it's, it, it's kind of, we have to kind of tiptoe around it cause it's like Linux and, um, it's kind of intense, you know, like not everyone, right. uh, administration, but we started out in, on, on the learn uh, .com page. We have, um, three tutorials so far on, um, I'm actually foc not focusing on using it as a computer. I'm trying to focus on it as here's how you connect a button right. and then 
press the button, it plays an MP3, which is kind of cool. So that's like one of the first projects that we did. And then we also have um, a project where you have a light sensor and it can read the light sensor. So this is stuff that you can't do with your MacBook Air. And that's what I think what I'm trying to focus on with the Raspberry Pi because it's so low cost that um, if something goes wrong and it, with electronics, like, trust me, like a lot of stuff goes wrong. We have like a you have a badge for like when you let the blue <laughs> out of a chip. <laughs> the chi- I flamed a chip badge. <laughs> like I broke it. Oh, but you should be proud of it because like, you know, you learn something. It's it, You can smell it. There's like a thing you see the smoke come oh, up yeah. and that's. Experience. And um, it, it, the thing is, it's so low cost that even if you break it, it's it's only like thirty five dollars. It's not right. the end of the world. And compare that to, you know, a decade ago when I was working with development boards. I mean, they were like four hundred dollars, right. you know, something like this it would be so expensive. So you had to like tiptoe around it. And, you know, if you had a class in it, the professor was like, if you break this, you have to buy one because we don't have any more grant money. <laughs> so um, I think this is so cool how. Like with, be, between the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi and um, like all these other things from TI, it, it, all these companies are coming together and they're also doing educational stuff and making it low cost enough that high school students are going to have this. So it's going to be Lego logo Raspberry Pi, you know, it's cool. So let, let's take a look at some of the latest projects at Adafruit because I know you brought uh, show and tell with you. Okay, here. yeah. Well, I can show off. Well, I can show off um, some stuff that's not out yet too. Ooh, but okay. Really um, fun is. Um, hold on, I have a this ice tube clock. This is a really popular project. Hold on. Oh, sorry, wrong power adapter. Just give me one second. Wait, this. Wait for the blue smoke, folks. Uh, I have to. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Limor Freed or Limor Freed of Adafruit.com. She is. Uh, Miss Ada and uh, is just amazing. And uh, this is something I think Lady Ada, I should say, LadyAda.net is her webpage. And I think this is uh, um, something that uh, everybody should be just playing with. Oh, look at that. This is a really popular project. It's a little bit harder than most of our projects, so it's kind of an intermediary difficulty kit. And um, it's a kit you have to solder all of these parts onto the circuit board. And it has this beautiful old Russian tube. Um, you can kind of see. Is it's it a Nixie? It's an, you said it's an ice tube? Or? It's, yeah, it's not a Nixie tube. It's, it's a vacuum fluorescent. Ooh. So not, um, it's not orange. It's bluish. But I think it's really beautiful. So now it's showing the local time, which is around 640. Um, and then people can mod it. So like this one has a mod where you put a GPS module on it. And so it gets – if you put it outside it'll, or near the window, it'll get the most recent time. So this is a really beautiful project. And this is really popular. People love to build clocks. So instead of spending 85 bucks for a silly clock radio, spend 85 bucks and get an education – yeah. In in building with a and are these Russian display tubes vintage or are you making new ones? Where are you getting them? They're limited, so when they're gone, they're gone. There's, we have a, a like a thousand left over. So, um, yeah, they're no longer made. They were made uh, during the Cold War, and so the cool thing about the Cold War is, um, you know, the factories had to keep producing even if nobody was buying anything. So um, just to keep the numbers up. So we, we, there, there were a lot, and we, we, there's thousands of these out in the world, but um, they are limited supply. There's 85 left. Yeah. I, I bet you before the show's over, they'll be gone. So um, Here's another project. Uh, this is a brain machine, and this is a project that we did with Mitch Altman, who is this, um, this just wonderful soul, and he goes around and he starts hacker spaces and maker spaces, and he teaches people how to solder. Um, and he, uh, he also did the TV Be Gone which I can't show because we don't have a TV here, so I can't demo it. But he did the brain machine. And this is really cool. He's really into, like, um, hacking your brain. And so this flashes lights and makes noises on the, on the headset. And then when you um, you put it on like this, <laughs> and, and then you can see it blinks, and then I wear this, and it, um, it puts you into a relaxed state. <laughs> or it makes you insane, but... <laughs> no, but it's... <laughs> He kept going to like events and, and, and maker spaces and doing this project. And he came to us and he said, hey, could you make a kit so that wow. we get it together? And so that's really fun because it's um, you can wear it while you're meditating and you can like, see spots. That's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> I ordered a, a Little Bits kit uh, from you guys some time ago. That's kind of cool. Little Bits is totally awesome. Aya is um, also – she's here in New York and um, 
she's uh, uptown in Soho. And yeah, she's doing really cool stuff. And she she's taking the, this kind of technology and bringing it to even um, younger people. So it's it's so cool. I saw her at Maker Fair, and um, she was um, showing off like you know, these kids, like the, the kit to these like super young kids, like six year old kids, and they would start building projects. And uh, she was actually on our um, Ask an Engineer show two weeks ago. So if people want to look at our archives, you can watch a full hour of us and Aya. And it's awesome. And she has actually, um, uh, she actually has a new kit coming out that's even bigger. And she just got a round of funding, which is really exciting. I saw that a big round of funding. So because I have the little bits and I want more. Because these, these snap together with magnets. There's no soldering. So it's perfect for a little kid to get an idea of what components can do and how you can mix and match them in interesting ways. Well, they, they call them digital Legos, but I think it's actually a little bit more creative than that because you can mix it with other things. Like yeah. one of the lovely things about um, Aya and her webpage and, and she's working with the community is taking a dollhouse and then hacking it with little bits or like taking a cardboard box and painting it and then adding little bits. So it's, it's a very creative play. It's really good. It's not, it's not just sitting at a computer typing, although right. that, that's good. It's like very like creative and fun and like the kids go crazy and do stuff that you'd never think of. I really wonder now that there, this maker movement is happening, we're seeing hacker spaces, we're seeing places like Adafruit, if you're mm. gonna, if we are gonna see a shift in the generations, my the generation, my generation, the generation growing up now, uh, my generation, uh, you know, because uh, I'm an old guy and uh, digital technology wasn't working very well when I was young, we had to do it ourselves. But then there was a whole generation after us that just, you know, you go to the store, you buy one, you throw it out when you're done. I think this next generation, they're going to know how to make this stuff. They're going to have an interest in making this stuff, and they're going to have more control and understanding of what they're doing than, ge than the generation before. And I like that idea. Yeah, actually, something I wanted to mention, because um, you just reminded me, um, there is a Google Maker Camp happening right now on Google+. I don't know if you use the Google+, Plus, but um, I think it's like 30 days, I think it's like today, yesterday, thing, or this week, and it's going on for a month, and it's 30 days of um, hackers and makers and like projects and stuff that you can do either just because you want to or with kids or with like a group of kids. Um, so if if you want to learn some of this stuff and, and start hacking with it, it's really fun because like it's like summer camp, but you don't have to leave your computer room. Um, and I'll be doing um, I'm, one of the days I'll be doing an electronics day on the 16th. Um, so if you, you know, tune in in two weeks or three weeks, um, I'll be doing like a, a hands on project on Google Plus. So that'll be really fun. Yeah, we highlighted that on our um, uh, on our uh, this week in Google show. Uh, that really looks neat. And every day there's something new to do, so you don't have to go to the camp. You can do it at home with mom or dad. You can be anywhere in the world. You don't have to, you know, send your kids away to camp or drive them or whatever. So there's just some awesome projects so far, and they've got like an all star lineup. So it's really great because it's hard to get all these people together, you know, <laughs> in like one room. But uh, with Google Plus, they do it, so that's good. Yeah, it's a good use of uh, of uh, Hangouts and all of, and all of that to be able to do it. Um, so show us some more. I'm just I'm I'm having I'm like a kid in a candy shop. I I, I hope I can I hope I before the I get off the air I can order one of those clocks. But I have a feeling I'm out of luck. But what else you got? Um, okay, let me see. Oh, here's a, a a not released yet project. Hold on, let me make sure I've got the right power adapter this time. I don't want to make the same mistake I did. Um, so this is a not ready for prime time. It's it's still in beta project and this is called spectro and it's an arduino inside there's an arduino you can see the the port and it's really cut, up, cut on a laser cutter and it's a spectrum analyzer it's so bright it's gonna be hard to oh see i it. can no but i can hear you i can see you when you talk yeah oh that's well, cool so spectrum analyzer, but it's also hackable because it's an arduino and it's open source since there's like a we made a clock version like a clock that displays on it and we made um i think what else we did with this display we had uh yeah we had a couple clocks we had i think like a network meter or something fun how but would you like, do a clock oh it, it's it's um 16 by 32 pixels and so we had we have um a clock that's just bars and then we had a clock that looks like a kind of a pac-man-y character oh, neat. and the dots are the um the time so it's really cool because i it's fun to make stuff that's like you know, sure you can plug your you have to build this but sure you can plug your ipod into it and you're done but then you can also hack it and mod it and do something <laughs> and that's what i think um arduino is all about like this has you know it's arduino at heart it has uh, the hacking and making 
capability built in. And so one of the things that we're hoping for is that, um, you know, as makers and hackers and tinkerers do more stuff, we have businesses that realize the potential of not keeping everything closed source, not keeping it yes. under. So like a really good example that like it's it's like already two years old now, but is the Connect. So um, that's the you, Microsoft Connect, the thing with the Xbox. Microsoft Connect thing, which was the like the interactive video game thing. Mm -hmm. And um, when we heard about this, this was like November, like a year and a half ago now. But when we heard about it and I looked at the specs, and I was like, wait a minute, they're doing um, like 3D video rendering like for <laughs> That's incredible because I'd seen so many students at college, like in multiple schools, trying so hard to get that technology. And then um, Microsoft basically did it for like a hundred bucks. It's like cheaper than anything else. So we sponsored a contest um, for a thousand dollars to hack the connect and make it open source. So it doesn't work with the Xbox. It works with Linux, works with your Mac, works with any kind of computer. And, um, like Microsoft kind of said like, well, we don't really condone this or authorize and we kind of wish you wouldn't do this. And then we're like, all right, bounties doubled. And then, <laughs> and they said something else. Like some person was like, well, like this is not allowed and will avoid your warranty. And we're like, triple. So uh, <laughs> by the time we tripled the bounty, um, this uh, wonderful hacker fellow in Spain uh, had reverse engineered the Connect and got it working, and he posted it up, and and he he won it, uh, the competition, and and then we donated. We actually had um, a, a bigger budget, so we donated the rest of it to uh, the EFF. <laughs> you had he got three thousand, and the EFF got two thousand, and that's just fantastic. I mean, the thing is, that's cool is is that that kind of hacking, reverse engineering a USB device like that to make it work with any kind of computer, not just a Microsoft computer, is totally legal. Um, and that's awesome. And uh, what's really funny, of course, is after this, like, oh, we don't condone it. We don't think you should do this. Um, you know, a bomber gets on stage at like the next like Microsoft meeting and is like, our future is connect. Exactly. Hack. We're going to release an API. And like, they did like a funded tech stars thing. And so um, I think we kind of convinced, like, it's, you know, it's, it, we convinced them, right? Like they saw thousands of people doing all these projects. I know for like, Two months, every blog, Boing Boing, Life Hacker, and Gadget, Gizmo, they were all plastered with Connect hacks. And it was so cool. You broke the ice. Microsoft thought this is a terrible idea until you showed it wasn't. Now, you you were responsible. You were one of the people who worked on the, on the uh, open source hardware committee the, the, to, to create the idea, the name, the term. What does that mean to you? What is open source hardware? Well, open source hardware, well, hopefully um, a lot of people who watch the show are, are familiar with like technologies that use open source oh, software. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, Firefox is the most popular in Linux, which is the Raspberry Pi operating system and, and also runs, you know, Apache that runs basically every web, web server in the world. And when I was in school... Um, Let me tell you something, I Lamore. The people who watch this show not only know open source, they love Adafruit. And you have a real-time uh, stock system, I can tell, because you only have 10 ice tube clocks left. I had to rush and get that ice tube before we sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole thing is, I, was, I, I grew up in Boston. And so, you know, Boston is in some ways like the seat of open source software because that's where the FSF is, you know, is and is born. Yeah. IT, which has done so much with Richard open source Stallman software. Richard Stallman and F. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then now they moved, but they used to have an office there. And so I kind of grew up with like, you know, like in high school, I'm like installing like you know, free BSD on my Mac SE30 and like having a really good time with open source software. Wow. And then I went to electrical engineering. Um, electrical engineering is a little bit different because it's, you know, it's physical based and it's CAD based, but um, hardware has become more like software because there's firmware, you, you program chips. They're not just wired together. There's some, there's some programming inside of them. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you know, you upload a sketch to it. And so that stuff is basically the same as the software. So you can open source that. And then I thought, well, wouldn't it be neat if you could uh, take the analogy of open source software, the ability to reproduce a software and port it and, and manipulate it and hack it and take that to hardware. And so when I started Adafruit, I was like, you know what, like, let's just like open source stuff. Let's just put the CAD files, the part files, the firmware, everything up online uh, for free. 
uh, not only is in speeches, but is, you know, is in beer. So people can download my stuff. It's under Creative Commons licenses and then fork it and modify it. And um, I see that all the time. I see people say, hey, I took like your um, Raspberry Pi case from Thingiverse and I like modified it and I put like this nice logo on it and venting holes and whatever. And then they we upload it under the Creative Commons license. So I think it's so neat because, you know, open source hardware is so um, new and in a way it's really old because you know, in the 60s and 70s and even the 50s, when people were doing ham radio and, and, and building analog electronics, people would publish up schematics. They would publish them in, in magazines or in books and they'd pass them around. And then there was kind of a lull for a while. And now I hope to bring it back. So, yeah, it, there's um, an open source hardware definition and there's a bunch of licenses out there. There's the CERN license. There's the a Tapper license. Um, there's a yearly event now. It's going to be its third year, the open source hardware uh conference which is held here in um manhattan or at, uh, is it, yeah it's going to be in manhattan i believe um and aya who uh did little bits which is an open source hardware company started it so yeah it's like a big party we're all we're all in it together are there any guys in this stuff are there no guys in this <laughs> <laughs> just teasing <laughs> i love it um uh, uh, conference half the women were speakers uh, wow. half the speakers wow yeah it's it's great it's a very inclusive um, group of people and we have you know all sorts of people roboticists and engineers and hackers and everybody just all doing hardware together and sharing it what would be a, something good to start uh with uh for somebody who's kind of new is maybe done some software or maybe not maybe just watched a lot of twit and, and it says i'd like to start building something in other words somebody like me what would <laughs> that'd be a good thing to start with bunch of really good stuff to start with. Um, if you want to do like software programming stuff, like you want to like, you know a little bit about software and so you want to um, take that skill set and move it to hardware, yeah. I really getting an Arduino Experimenter Kit, which is, um, or Arduino Starter Pack. Uh, and and this, the Experimenter Kit is a no solder kit. So you just plug stuff into a breadboard and, and you have the wires, everything's ready to go. And you can do stuff from uh, having a temperature sensor to a servo moving and um, LEDs light up um, to like a relay, all sorts of stuff. And then once you're a little bit familiar with that, you can um, pick up a, any components you want, and we have a tutorial for every component and example code for Arduino, and then you can you basically copy and paste it, you mush it together. So um, that's really cool. Yeah, so there's a starter pack, for example. And, and, then a, there's, and it's not hugely expensive, 65 bucks. No soldering skill needed. Yeah. Um, yeah, check out also the Experimenter Kit. And then if you want to learn to solder, um, the two most popular soldering kits we have are the TVB Gone Kit, which Mitch Altman, who did the Brain Machine, designed uh, with me, and also the Minty Boost Kit. And the Minty Boost Kit is a little USB charger for your iPhone or your GPS or you know anything that charges over USB. So those are two um, pretty easy projects to start soldering. And then you can mix it with Arduino, and then before you know it, like you're you're doing pretty um, intense projects. Mitch got a lot of attention for TV Be Gone. That was the device that you can go into a bar, press a button, and it turned off all the TVs in the bar. And he got a lot of press for that. I'm just glad it's still alive and still working, and it's a still it's a project. That was a very early hack. Yeah, uh, it was really, he he did the TV Be Gone like many many years ago, and then we met up at uh, I think a Maker Fair, and he said, you know, the TV is good, but it's like you know it's slowing down. I need to come up with something new. And I said, hey, let's do a kit version that's like super powerful and works like 300 feet away and he's like yeah let's do that so we did that uh so the the tv be gone kit is like super powered and um it, it has like tons of codes and we up <laughs> so yeah it's it's definitely trouble in a box it's also really good for kids because um i think a lot of a lot of teenagers especially you know they they want to the hack and and make trouble a little bit and this is a good way to sort of trick them into learning how to solder you know they get a tv be gone kit I, I just, this is so much fun. We're talking to Lamar Freed of Adafruit. We've, we're, the site has slowed down a lot. Let me, I, let me just check. I think we're down to uh, very few of your clocks left. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's only, there's only one last thing on my, uh, on my list that I was like, I have to remember to bring it up. We have an iPhone, iPad app for um, engineers or budding engineers. Oh. And 
it's really cool because um, we're kind of experimenting with getting electronics to people in all sorts of ways. And so we thought like, hey, let's make an app that like teaches you some electronics. And we're tying it into our educational system because iPads are actually really great for looking at tutorials while working on a project because you can like sit it up and then look at it and swipe while you're soldering. So um, that's really cool. It's called Circuit Playground. You can check it out, the App Store. It, it's not a free app, but... Um, it's three dollars, but then you get a three dollar coupon in the store, so it's basically free. Circuit Playground, it's in the App Store. All right, now you got me. Now, see, now I want to do a segment. There's the lovely Ada fruit. To, by the way, that is uh, that is a fruit, isn't it? Ada fruit. I mean, that is that an actual fruit? I know it's named after Countess Ada of Lovelace. Yeah, the the Ada fruit is. Um, it actually was a fruit, but then it kind of turned into a more of a flower shape. So yeah. That, yeah our logo again but yeah we've got op amp calculators for the hardcore people and then we actually added something really interesting in the latest app which we're experimenting with because we did a show and tell before with google hangouts where people show up with electronics projects and show them off but not everyone has video so with this app um you can take a photo of a project and then oh. it you us so like people are sending in like oh yeah i'm working on this and they'll send it to us and we'll we'll post it up on the blog because we one of the things that we're trying to do is get more engineers and hackers to share what they're working on because it's sometimes it's hard for them to kind of get out of the den you know right. what i mean so we're hoping to do more like post up a photo post up a video so we're always telling people like post 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 get people to share some more i'm just going to take a few hours uh, out of our weekly schedule and just sit here and solder stuff it's very relaxing. <laughs> and people can watch. We'll build st We'll build a kid a week. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? We're talking to Lamore Freeds. Hang on, Lamore. We're not done yet. I want to talk a little bit more with you. But first, I have to tell everybody about Ford. Now, you would think that there would be some disconnect between a big 100-plus-year-old company, an old-school industrial company like the Ford Motor Company, and what's happening in the maker space, in the hacker space, and there isn't. They, In fact... Uh, we went to Maker Fair in Dearborn. Ford sponsored it. Remember, we were out there, and it was a big. It was at the Henry Ford Museum because they get it. They understand, and for them, what they're the way they're starting to see their vehicles is as a platform for people to do stuff with. Now, there isn't any hardware hacking, hacking happening yet, but there definitely is a software API. They call it AppLink, and a chance for you to build apps that work with Ford Sync. And, and you take your phone into the car, and suddenly you, you're bringing new capabilities to the automobile thanks to an API, thanks to the idea of making the car a platform, the vehicle a platform. A good example of this is my Ford mobile app, which was really, I think, in a way, it's a reference app or a demonstration app for the Ford engineers to show people what could be done. Now, you, you have to have a 2012 Ford Focus Electric. It'll go to more and more of the electrics as time goes by but if you've got go to you can also do this at ford.com slash technology and they have lots of information about it but you but go here's the deal bring your smartphone blackberry iphone or android phone to an ev certified ford dealer say i want to test drive the ford focus electric and i want to test drive the my ford mobile app have the app on your phone you download it it's free and now you can do things like it'll tell you where the car is the state of the charge of the car it'll teach you how to be a more efficient driver. It'll tell you how much CO2 you've saved. You could do things like program in the value charging feature on the car. You're sitting in the living room, car's plugged into the, the in the garage, and you go, don't charge until it's off peak hours, please. Save me money. Or you could say things like, I'm going to leave at 8 a.m., make sure the car is 72 degrees before I leave, and it'll heat it or cool it on the mains. That's the idea. So it doesn't use the battery, and your car's ready to go exactly when you are. It's things like that are just, I mean, it's really... I think, believe it or not, and I know these guys, I've talked to these guys, the CTO at Ford and, and Prasad and, and all the engineers, they have exactly the same mindset. They, they think of their, their vehicles as a platform for, for developers to do interesting, cool things. And I invite you to play along. Visit at Ford.com slash technology or go to your EV certified Ford dealer and drive one today and take a look at that My Ford mobile app. Really a great example of uh, what you can do with some smart engineering. Lamar Freed is our guest on Triangulation today. I wish you weren't in New York. It'd be so fun just to have you come by every week with a new project and show us what you're doing. But you can do that because you have that great show, Ask an Engineer. What night is that? Um, from uh, 9 p.m. Eastern to 10 p.m. Every Monday, did you say? Sorry, t uh, 10. Sorry. We have um, a show and tell uh, every Saturday from 9.30 to 10. Okay. And that's a 
uh, plus hangout. And then we have from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, we have the uh, Ustream Ask Engineer. Fun. <laughs> Fun. You can make a SIM reader at Adafruit.com if you want to read your SIM. It's over here. There you go. If you want to read your SIM card, you can. You've got, what's that? How is it NetJuino different from Arduino? Is it a net-connected Arduino? NetJuino uses .NET, which oh. is a C-sharp uh, framework. Right. So it's good for people who, who've done um, that kind of hacking. But um, I just wanted to mention uh, something because you brought it up. You know, the, the history of, of American making is in, is in car hacking. People have been modifying cars and, and doing cool stuff with cars for, you know, decades. And it's, it's part of what, you know, Americans make. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that was why it was really cool to have the Maker Fair in Detroit at the Henry Ford Museum. I it, heard that museum is fantastic. Yeah. Ford Museum is the most incredible museum. And yeah, it's so great to, to see that they're supporting Maker Fair. And, and uh, yeah, I'll be at uh, the Maker Fair in New York as well. And, and I'm sure Ford will be there too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, it, it, it is something that was disappeared for a while. And I think even in automobiles where, you know, you, there was no more shade tree mechanics because this computer, you have to be a dealer to plug into the car and all the diagnostics. But fortunately, there are small scale things like the ice tube clock, uh, which is now out of stock, I'm sorry to say. Well, people do connect Arduinos to their cars using the diagnostic port. And I definitely, I, I don't have a car, so I, because I'm in Manhattan, but I do see a lot of people doing awesome. Oh, that's like, interesting like tracking the voltage or like the RPMs. And th there's tons of projects um, for sure that have to do with um, computers and like microcontrollers and car hacking. And you don't have to have like an old car. You can actually have a modern car that is computerized and you can plug in and get all these cool sensor readouts. And yeah, it's, it's great. Incidentally, uh, just in case you want to know, Ford encourages that uh, they have a technology called OpenXC, which lets you use Bug Labs tools to create stuff in your Ford vehicle. Right, Bug Labs is an open, another open source hardware. Company. So yeah, we've got like the trifecta of uh, of open source hardware here in uh, New York. It's it's a hardware city. I wonder why New York. It's Maybe. an exciting city. Yeah. I don't know. And well, and there's a great industrial past in New York, and you almost feel like uh, New York. It feels like it's it's almost it feels like it's being made. As we speak, you know, it's always being built and constructed and maybe it's just the spirit there. Yeah, we've got some really great and fantastic startups, so hardware and software. And it's, it, you know, since I've moved here like five, six years ago, I've, I've kind of watched it bubble up and uh, I'm glad I left Cambridge. Yeah, I'm yeah. Where the is. Uh, now, uh, what uh, are you going to do next? What is what? I mean, you're Adafruit's great. You're, you're, you're promoting this in the world. Is, is, is there something you haven't done yet that you'd like to do? doing next um well I'm, I'm working on this educational system that's kind of what i'm focusing I on this learn.adafruit.com is so cool it's like two weeks old so like i'm still oh, okay on. well that's next doing a lot of this raspberry pi stuff to try to get people um who have these low-cost computers to start like basically doing electronics just trick them into doing that <laughs> um, i'm going to be doing a lot of wearable stuff with a new flora platform that we're still beta mm. testing in going to be doing some awesome wearable stuff so you'll be able to wear like a television screen and stuff it'll be great um and she you know becky already has it like the gps dog collar project um is on the learn.adafruit.com site and that's one of her most recent projects i don't know we're just we're just having like so much fun here and uh it's just great like we're constantly doing cool projects and one of the nice things is that um you know we're, we're a privately held company and we we kind of so do what we want. So like a, a month ago, we just decided, hey, you know, let's make a Lego set that's like space. And we did. And we, we made a we commissioned a, a hacker space made out of Lego and we put it on the Lego Cuso set. And so, um, you know, because it's like it's great to have like a veterinarian like thing and like a salon. But like we thought, like, wouldn't it be cool if like girls could build a Lego set that was like laser cutter, 3D printer, you know, a soldering iron. So it's up on Lego Kuso and um, you can go check that out. It's a project, uh, let's see, 17491. Or you can go to adafruit.com slash Lego. And uh, if we get 10,000 votes, they say they'll they'll make it into a kit. So that's really cool. Oh, I bet we could do that. I mean, we sold out the clock. We were already selling out the, the, uh, the yep. uh, Pong clock, which people are going to now because they can't get the tube clock. I forgot to bring that over. We have a, um, a the Monocron, which is a hackable Arduino clock, and it I can't say Pong because it's a registered trademark of Atari, but it does play retro arcade tennis for two. 
We had Nolan Bushnell was on two weeks ago. And <laughs> even though he no longer owns Atari, and, and of course, it's uh, whoever it is that owns it, uh, this, that French company probably wouldn't want you to say it. But Nolan would be all over this. He loves this kind of stuff. Oh, it's so cool. I should definitely watch that. Yeah. And Nolan is a, 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 a fantastic historian. Who's, you know, I'm sure he had great stories to tell. Amazing. We want to get him back because there's so much more. So, uh, and, you know, we've been talking with the folks at Make Magazine. We have a space in the back. We want to build a maker space in, the, in our Twit studios and, uh, and just be doing stuff all the time back there. So you inspired me to do more of this. Uh, you could find out more about Lamore at LadyAda.net. Um, that's her personal page. Of course, adafruit.com is the website for buying all this stuff. And learn.adafruit.com is the new thing, which is basically Pinterest for makers. Absolutely a great place to get inspired. And I also want to encourage everybody, we've got to get Lady Ada's workshop built uh, at a Lego. <laughs> we, want, we want this. We really want this. So how many 10,000 votes and they'll make one? We have to get 10,000 votes and they'll make it, um, or they'll, they'll go to the next step of making it. And This does like, not look like you, by the way, although the hair is right. Well, yeah, it's with Lego, but that's my cat, Mosfet. Oh, that's um, neat. Your cat's name, Mosfet? He's a little mascot. He's a, <laughs> like, what are you doing? Why are you looking at the screen? Um, but yeah, he's our mascot. We show him off on the, on the end of the show. And also we have a blog and we post like 20 things a day, art, electronics, hacking, making, all sorts of cool stuff. And yeah, we do the weekly uh, Ask Engineer show and the weekly show and tell. And then I'll be at um, Maker Faire New York. Um, I won't be speaking, but I'll, I'll be hanging out there and also at um, the Open Source Hardware uh, Summit also in New York. So that's the my next steps. Who put this kit together? Is it Bruce Lowell? Because he really did a good job. Lowell. Yeah. You can, you can uh, his skill. No, he's he's fantastic, and uh, we worked with him. And but yeah, he 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 got you know he just has the library of all the parts. Like I can build an electronic kit because I have the library in my head. But with Lego, I'm I'm used to just like well, you have like red blocks or green blocks or blue blocks. And I was like, <laughs> so uh, we had to like you know to get the the Hacko soldering iron, which is look, look is a perfect imitation. Uh, he had to really scour uh, in the pick and place and the laser cutter. So it's it's totally cool. We'd love to have. I mean, it'd be, wouldn't that be great? Like a modern hackerspace Lego kit. Uh, every the, uh, we're going to have it happen right now. You've already got one thousand nine hundred nineteen votes. We are going to get ten thousand votes before the end of the week. If everybody who watches this show right now goes to adafruit dot com slash Lego, there's a link there uh, to the uh, Lego site. You do have to create a face an account or log in with your Facebook account. I think I'll do that. I'll just sign in with my Facebook account, and then I'm going to cast a vote. For this Lego Thank kit, because I want to buy one. I don't care if it's 200 bucks. I want to buy one, and I'm going to cast the vote. Let's get 10,000 votes. All right? Well, let's go, Team Kuso. <laughs> uh, this is great. I'm wondering, is there anything else? I mean, I have a... What else you got? Just show us. any. we got plenty of time. Anything you want to show us, I would love to see it. This is another fun project. This is um, a really easy project. It's an LED belt kit. And it uses this cool LED strip, and you can program it to display anything you want. And it's uh, it's popular with kids who want to have a costume of some sort. Mm. For Burning Man, if you're going to Burning Man, you know you can wear this at your camp. I know that you have a Twit camp over there. Um, <laughs> I wish we did. When we get in a Twit camp at Burning Man, that's a great idea. Um, but yeah, you should email me. I'll send you out like a like a Linux badge. Okay, yeah. I want mine. I want my Tux badge. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I earned it. I was the first person to install Linux on live television in the history of the world. Did you have to recompile the kernel live too? Uh, probably. I know we didn't have video drivers working. I can't remember if it was Slackware or Red Hat we were installing. But it was like you actually had to set it up and it, like you'd have to like, what was it, XVID you X, had to run? XFree, yeah. It was amazing. You had to go through all this stuff and all the settings. Oh, my gosh. And we were doing it on live television. Is that crazy or what? Yeah, it's crazy. Now, I actually just recently installed Ubuntu, and it um, it just runs. I know. It's crazy. Like, it's like Windows now. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, I ran out of demos to show, but um, thank you so much for having me on your show. This was super fun. Lamore, you're uh, great. Um, uh, you're an inspiration for everybody out there, and I just hope there's a whole generation. You know, I get this because when we did Tech TV, and we did things in 1998 like install Linux on, on network television, 
Uh, and I, I now meet people who are in their early 20s who said, yeah, you inspire me. I grew up watching this, and I, now I'm a geek. And I think that you, Limor, are, Limor, are doing exactly this. And in, 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 with any luck, when you're my age, people are going to come up to you all over and say, because of you, I built this and that, and now I'm doing this and that. And you're going to be amazed at what a difference you've made because it really is exciting. And I, and I truly think that Adafruit is is absolutely changing the world. So thank you for doing that. Tell you one last story because you just reminded me of a, another cool story is I was actually at Maker Faire last year and Maker Faire is like, Make has been out for like seven, eight years, right? It's actually been quite a while. Yeah. And for us, like old folks, it's like, ah, oh, it's been like five years. But for kids, like in high school, that's actually like a long time. Oh, yeah. So I met kid, well, not, not kids anymore, but they're like 19 year olds. And they said, when I was 12, I saw an article or a project that you built and I was so excited by it that I decided to go into electrical engineering and now I'm in college and I'm studying electrical engineering. So like at least I've made at least like three engineers or like I put, I oh, put yeah. down the halo controller and like I stopped playing video games, but uh, I started building stuff. And so, yeah, like it's, it's very addictive. And I think if you pick up a kit, I'll send you out something and uh, you can show up on um, my show and tell on Google plus the hangout. And I, and, I, and everybody wants to know what's in that big box behind you because so, somebody in your chat room said that he'll buy it. This is Otter Boxes. This is a this is a cool pillow. This is um uh, we have a, a Becky did this awesome project. Ohm um, sweet ohm. Resistor chart. So it's ohm sweet ohm, but it, you can read your resistor values. <gasps> it's a resistor chart and a pillow. So it's double the use. <laughs> <laughs> Lamore, thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show. This is awesome. Oh, so much fun. Adafruit.com. Learn.adafruit.com. Ladyada.net. Uh, Lamore okay. Freed. Thank you so much for being here. Boy, is that inspiring. Bye, Lamore. Bye. Watch her show. Watch We're, my show. <laughs> come out and visit us. We got to build that makerspace, Lisa. We got to build that thing back there. We're going to have the... I want everything. I want to make... We're going to make it and happen. That's what we're going to do. All right. Take care, Lamore. Thank you so much. We do triangulation every Wednesday. See, we get great people, don't we? Round about, you know, it varies uh, depending on how late I am uh, through the day, but about 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 2200 UTC on Twit.tv. Watch live because there's always stuff before and after that's as interesting, if not more interesting, than the stuff in the middle. But it's all good. If you don't get to watch live, we do make on-demand versions available, audio and video, always after the fact at Twit.tv slash T-R-I or subscribe. See, that's really the thing. We got it with this like six, episode 62, right? We got dozens of shows to subscribe at, uh, at uh, iTunes, the Zoom Marketplace, wherever it is that you get your podcasts. Thanks for joining us and we will see you next week on Triangulation.